Today we're gonna look at some faceted gems from some very unlikely materials. And we're gonna learn about why you rarely see this and what makes these so special. Plus, we're gonna try and stump each other. By the way, can you imagine <laughs> That's faceting really, that? really, really small. So we're gonna put on some gloves today because we were told that some of these materials might be a little less than safe. Feels weird, the air going through the glow holes. Oh, I do feel that. Makes your hands feel cold. Here's your first stone. Okay, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> yeah, with the gloves on, this is all very sketch. We're doing like okay. a deal or something. Especially with the paper wrap. <laughs> yes. It's like, don't tell them when you got this. Ooh. Okay, so it has a bunch of spectral colors in there. It is on the interior. It's not on the, like it's not a coating or anything. It is a very doubly refractive stone. All the gemstones not in the cubic crystal system are what are called anisotropic or doubly refractive. So when light enters into a gemstone, it splits into two beams. In some gemstones, the difference in refraction between the two beams is very intense. And what that does is it creates a doubling of the facet edges and it creates a sort of haziness. Calcite is an extremely doubly refractive stone. It's often colorless. Two good and check marks. calcite has perfect cleavage, and you often get iridescence in cleavage planes. So that's where I'm going. So now I'm gonna give you the mineral specimen from which that was faceted. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> Iceland spar. <laughs> I should have been more specific. Iceland spar is a type of calcite. <laughs> it has very few impurities, so it's very clean, very transparent, white. It's called Iceland spar because it used to be used by the Vikings to navigate because they could tell the sun direction, essentially. With, on a cloudy day. On a cloudy they day. They could tell where the sun was. So you can see, as you rotate the stone, how it doubles and then the words become one. Calcite is a three on the Mohs scale of hardness, so it's not a very hard material. It also has three planes of perfect cleavage, meaning that its general durability is not that high. Calcite is one of the most difficult minerals to cut, so to have something like this is it's really pretty fun. exceptional, yeah. So that was a fun one. Thanks, Rob. Yeah. Okay, so your turn. Okay. I like this one. This is a fun gemstone. Okay. Well, immediately, it's very light, so it's not very hefty. So what I see are some bubbles and like a, I was gonna say plasticky edges, which made me think, she's trying to trick me with glass. But no, it's not glass. And I also see some inclusions down in the corner. Oh no, it's just kind of like a, a little break or a fissure. I have a guess for this. I do believe this is amber. It wasn't on my radar because you'd never facet Amber, but that's the whole point of the, of the that's the, that's the bit for today. That's the bit. Yeah, so I'm gonna say Amber, final answer. All right. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's a dub for Rob. Cool, Amber bits here. So Amber is fossilized tree resin. It's the sap from an ancient tree that has been out of the tree for a very long time, millions and millions of years. Tree sap, as you know, is very sticky and things can get trapped in it pretty easily, especially small bugs or even uh, frogs. Anything that creeps and crawls can get stuck in amber. And one of the reasons that you wouldn't facet amber is because you want to look at all of those creepy crawlies, the inclusions, once living, inside your fossilized specimen because they tell a story of ancient history. People have been making amber jewelry for tens of thousands of years. So it's actually quite likely that this was maybe the first gem material ever used for jewelry. I'm so <laughs> glad I didn't guess that wrong. All right, we're both one for one. There you go. Oh. Take a crack at that. So this is a bright red gemstone. It's pretty included. It's not metallic, but it has a very bright luster that in some lights looks somewhat metallic. There's one thing I know and one thing that I am presuming. Okay. I'm presuming that this is a fairly soft material. Soft materials, you're typically not going to find them in faceted form, and this is faceted. But the one thing that I know is this is a bright, fiery red. There is one material that I know of that is this bright red color that's 
low on the hardness scale. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that I have gloves on because there are some uh, dangerous elements to this gemstone. But I'm gonna guess that this is cinnabar. <gasps> Look at that. Would you hold one of these? No, it's poisonous. Cinnabar is a mercury sulfide. Mercury, mercury can be poisonous to the body, and so it's good that we have gloves on here. Very lustrous for something that's a two, two and a half on the Mohs scale. It has that amazing red color. It's in a white matrix. Very soft, but also it often is very small, and so you're not gonna have opportunities to create these massive, faceted gemstones. Cinnabar is very hefty. It's non-metallic, but it is comparable to the SG or specific gravity of metallic gemstones. It has an SG of 8.1. That would have been a third element of why this was cinnabar. So we've been told that cinnabar is the most dangerous gem that we had on this episode. So we're gonna go ahead and take our gloves off. They're a little bit slippery and so we wanna be careful when we're holding the rest of the gems. I've got one up for you, and this is a cool one. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's thin. Oh, okay. So a lot of faceted stones will come to a point on one end. This one doesn't. It's literally just a thin slab with no point on either the top or the bottom. While there are facets around, I guess we would call this a pavilion. Both sides. I don't like even a know. Yeah, a double pav. Like a I really don't know. I see lots and lots of layering on the inside of the stone, which is not something that you would normally see in a faceted stone, but that's kind of the theme of the day. I'm seeing a little bit of iridescence and some shimmering of like, like I said, those sheets. And then on the flip side, actually, there's a little bit of pinks and purples. Based on what I'm seeing, I'm going to say that that is mica. Okay. I love that piece. That one's oh, fun. Which piece of it? Yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe this doesn't come apart in my hand. It, it might. It's, I suppose it could. The big characteristic of mica is that it's, it's this big crystal, but it's really like a, just a stack of many, many, many thin layers, which makes it insane this that one. one would try and facet this kind of material. Mica is like found in glitter makeup. This is also used in cement filler and insulation as well. Oh, this is gonna be It gross. feels weird. No, we mentioned hardness, right? Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> Nails on a mica board. I love gems. All right, there's your spe <laughs> your, uh, your gem steam. <laughs> wow, oh my goodness, bright orange. Okay, I see some iridescence. I was gonna guess fire opal, but it's a little heftier than I thought. That body color would be insane. A, a pretty, yeah. Come Looks on. like we you stumped done it. me. <laughs> well, what does the color remind you of, if anything? It reminds me of fire opal. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may have we may have done it this time. Couldn't guess that one. I didn't know it. Oh, cool. Here. This is crocoite. Crocoite. So we actually had this on our Fragile Gems episode. Mm -hmm. It is a fragile gem. And to create this, it's so transparent. Very it's transparent. It's bright orange. You can see, obviously, a lot of really thin tubes. To facet one of those is unbelievable. The, the original specimen must have it been must have quite been enormous. large. So crocoite is a lead chromium oxide. So it really is not typically used for faceting. It's obviously very brittle. I was nervous just rotating the thing. Yes, it is not a very durable gemstone. Handling this material is not a big deal from a uh, lethal perspective, but when you're fastening it, that can emit lead, obviously, and so that can be dangerous from an inhalation it perspective. It just lets a bunch of material into the air. You stumped me, Rob. It's what I do. Oh, your turn. It's probably my turn to get stumped, if we're honest. Yep. I think you'll get that. What do you mean, yep? <laughs> I think you'll get it. Oh, maybe you won't. <laughs> well. This is a difficult one. It just is blue. It's, yeah. We're getting a little bit of light through it, but it's a very dark blue, and it's very, very, very translucent. You do want to be careful with some of these with tweezers because most of these have a low hardness. That's right, I should have asked. That's fine. I should give you a hint. Okay. That's okay. I have a hunch already. My first thought was that maybe it's lapis because you don't usually 
facet lapis, and it's it can be a very dark blue. But now that I've blinded myself with this flashlight, it's so dark though. I'll go and with it, azurite. It's it's difficult. Is that your final answer? Sure, azurite. Not confident. Sodalite. Oh, I forgot about you. <laughs> no, I like sodalite. It's a great kind of royal blue color, but it also comes with the whites and the grays that sort of lighten it up. And it can have more transparency than lapis. So that, I mean, that was a good guess. Sodalite is a little harder than the other gemstones that we've featured. It's a five and a half to six, so it is harder and it's tougher. So you're actually gonna see a lot of sodalite in ornamental materials, carvings. It's great to carve. Typically, they're very included. They're pretty opaque or translucent. Mm -hmm. And so from a, a fastening perspective, typically with sodalite, there are other forms that will make it look more beautiful. You'll see it in cabochon, but fasted gemstone is rarer. You wouldn't know it just looking at this, but sodalite is part of the cubic crystal system, but crystals are very, very rare, which is maybe another reason why you wouldn't see a whole lot of faceted sodalite. You ready? Mm-hmm. All right. Oh my goodness, Don't teensy. Don't lose it. It's a sprinkle. I haven't a clue. Fire <laughs> Should I know what this is? Not faceted, <laughs> you know, but it's is difficult. is it a common it's, material? Uh, no, not to most people. I have no idea. Okay, go ahead and open the lid then. Oh, wolfenite. Wolfenite. If I saw this, that would give it away immediately because wolfenite often has these, it's like tabular crystals, and mm -hmm. so you have a lot of these kind of rectangular or square tabular shapes, and it's often this orange, reddish orange, reddish kind of color. It's a fairly soft material. It's like a two and a half to a three on the most scale of hardness. And so for obvious reasons, it's difficult to facet, but also wolfenite is often very tiny. And so it makes sense that this faceted gem, which by the way, can you imagine <laughs> faceting really, that? really, really small. From like a labor, a demand perspective, you're, you're not really gonna find many faceted gems on the market. From a durability perspective, they have low hardness, so that in and of itself makes it difficult to facet, but wolfenite is also sensitive to heat and vibrations, both of which are present during yeah. the fastening process. In abundance. And so, yeah, wolfenite is, is a fun one. It's definitely a collector's piece. If you go to gem shows, you'll see a lot of wolfenite specimens. Speaking of gem shows, did you know that it's the state mineral of Arizona, where the Tucson show is? I actually did not know that. Yeah. It's teeny tiny. Okay, you can open your eyes. Oh no, am I gonna have to use tweezers? Don't use oh, tweezers. Oh no! I'll give you a hint, you'll want to use the flashlight. Okay, it is red. Do you need help? Well, I know this isn't a red barrel, dude. It's a decent guess from the size, from a rarity perspective, from but- from the look on your face. It's not, okay, it's I'll not keep going. that rare. Red barrel, for the record, is one of the rarest minerals in the world. It is, but from and a, like- it rarely occurs at sizes larger than like one carat. Yeah. I see some chips on the facet edges. That tells me it's not crazy hard, but that's sort of been the theme for today. Yeah, there's, there's another really prominent feature you haven't named. It's quite lustrous. I wouldn't call it adamantine. Adamantine? <laughs> adamantine? Adamantine. Adamantine. I believe in you, generally. I don't think you're gonna get this, but you will be annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm not mad about that. Rutile. <laughs> so this is commonly seen as a mineral inclusion in other gemstones. I get sick of saying long needle-like inclusions of rutile. It's like <laughs> you say it ad nauseum when you're talking about all these gemstones. A whole number of, hey, you're kind of heavy, bud. Yeah, this was not on my radar because normally I think of rutile as existing pretty much exclusively in other gemstones. But think about like rutilated quartz and other instances where you have rutile inclusions. It has this like lustrous, it's got a like flash, a yes. metally flash. Yeah. Rutilated quartz, when I think about it in my head, is like yellow. The rutile is mm -hmm. like yellow, and I I don't think I had any idea that rutile was red, let alone this. Got darkly it. saturated. Got right? it. Well, now you do, and now y'all yeah. know. We're all learning today. Yeah. 
Okay, Rob, that was super fun. That was a lot of fun. That I, was challenging. Yeah, that I went was, in with some confidence I didn't, I don't think I should have had. It's very good to see all of the different ways that you can see specimens and faceted gems yeah. because the more you know, the more you can identify, the more educated you are. And this has shown there's always something to learn. Claire taught both of us and she would always say the first tool that you use is your eyes. And so take note of just the things that you see. Use your five senses, the things that you feel. Don't like Cinnabar. Don't like Cinnabar. <laughs> that was a really fun experiment. We I both thought. got stumped today and I mm. think that's good. So for my closer look, I want you guys to take a look at the mica. I love I, the shape of it. The I shape love that is there's cool. no point. There's no end. It's, it's double-sided. Mine is the crocoite. The artistry, the artistic value of this faceted crocoite is uh, really awesome. Let's take a closer look. We saw eight different gem varieties. We got stumped on a cumulative oh, yeah. total of I got stumped. I learned four. something today. <laughs> oh, I want to know if you guys got stumped on any. So let us know down in the comments. Be honest. And if you want to learn more about these minerals and more, go to our website, gemstones.com, where you can peruse and educate yourself a little bit so you yeah. don't get stumped like we did. And don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course, ring the bell so you don't miss out on our future videos. Thanks for watching. Take it easy.